This JN4 Jenny, World War One biplane. Uh, first, I'm just going to show you what we're using to fly the plane under controls. We're going to use a Logitech Extreme 3D joystick. This is an inexpensive joystick which works very well. A lot of the buttons I have programmed onto this joystick uh, don't really apply to this aircraft, but the trim buttons do. So five and six are trim up and down, and three and four are flaps, no flaps on this plane. This is an interior exterior view that I click on uh, during the flight. There's a brake key here up front, but number one, but it, this plane doesn't have a brake. I uh, use the drag stick, uh, tail dragger stick, basically to slow the plane down on landing. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, this is the throttle, which works fine. Uh, seven and eight are air traffic control and um, autopilot so that's not really applicable back then they didn't have air traffic control to talk to this plane doesn't really have a radio although you may see uh, on some times when you load it you may see a little um, device that pops up sort of looks like a cell phone and on that has a radio and a compass that you can switch to and if if you have that available um, then you'll be able to uh, turn on the radio and talk to ATC otherwise you won't be able to this is uh, approach and reverse thrust on mine, and I set this for spoiler and auto throttle, which don't apply. So we've got a mouse we're going to use. Very helpful to fly. Um, this plane in conjunction with the joystick, and also we have a keyboard. So we'll use the keyboard uh, a few times. All right, let's go back. Go back and let's hit world map to create a flight plan so i'm going to fly from richmond well i'll fly to richmond from chesterfield so i'm just going to zoom in on chesterfield and i'm going to pick a ramp start so i'll pick right here let's see maybe this one Set as departure. And I'll zoom out and go over here. We're just going to do uh, instrument flight rules. So I'm going to click on here and set as arrival. So they want us to arrive on runway number two. I have air traffic control turned off. So what I'm going to try and do this land right around here on this strip of grass we're using real time and real weather there's our nav log so we're going to fly up to 1200 feet just turn the nav log off i'm going to hit fly so this aircraft the jenny um it was used by the military in World War I, and it cost them about 5000 a plane to build them. After the war, they sold them off for as little as $500 to $200. Uh, a lot of military uh, veterans bought the planes because uh, they knew how to fly them, and they became known as, a lot of them, the Barnstormers. So they used to fly from different cities in what was known as the Flying Circus, and they would do stunts and sell rides to the locals for five dollars for a 15 minute ride but it was a tough way to make money so a lot of them also delivered mail in these and there was some of them that were involved in smuggling and some of them that did all three apparently so here we are sitting on uh, pavement and we'll take a look at the plane you can see it's a tail dragger with no wheel on it so that's why we're going on grass if this had a wheel, you could take off from um, the runway on pavement. Now, you can anyway with Microsoft Flight Sim. They won't stop you from doing that. So I'm going to hit ready to fly. So we get a cold start here. Let's take a look at how we're sitting. 
So we got these guys right in front of us. So, you know, it's a bit of a problem if I go straight ahead. So I'm going to do Shift P on my keyboard. And I'm going to show you what happens. It doesn't really work very well with this aircraft to push back. Uh, I would say it's probably a bug in the system. Because it's going to go underneath the aircraft and try and hook up to this... Uh, tail dragger stick and push the plane back but I'm going to see if he'll release and come off or rather than just get stuck under the plane I'll show you what happens but anyway he will push the plane back there he goes now I'm going to get it back far enough that I can uh, hit shift P again to end the pushback and we'll see what happens so I want to get back far enough that I'm able to turn around and get over onto the grass here to take off you can see from this uh, VFR map which you turn on and off using this you can see that uh, we have to fly that way and you can zoom in and out by using your mouse and you can drag so that's where we're flying to so I'm gonna hit shift P now see if the guy will release yeah he's coming off okay so that's a little bit strange looking you don't have the propeller going so force hopefully you'll get out of the way looks like he won't so anyway that would be something of a oh there he goes okay let's go inside the aircraft and have a look alrighty so what we have here is a little um, little light we can turn on so we can see things a little bit so here we have a temperature gauge this is uh, altitude ring and it's been set for us and you can actually adjust that by turning it so that would be the altitude that we're sitting at right now and actually when we're flying you'll see it actually will um, indicate our altitude here's an oil pressure gauge and we have rpms here now if uh, here's a fuel gauge up here see if I can zoom in a little bit to show you that there you go there's our fuel full full of petrol and uh, there's a couple batteries here that's our throttle so we control that just by our joystick I'm just going to go back a little further here that's the magneto lever and these are the uh, magneto breakers this is a fuel shutoff valve and I'm just going to show you how the joystick works very well very realistic you can see the cables all moving here so it's very realistic and, and all the wires strutting the wings etc just gonna go outside for a second I'll show you uh, that the rudder works and the elevator and so do the um, ailerons but the, there is no flaps on this plane there are no flaps all right so we're going to do a startup and we're going to use the um, checklist to do it so let's get over here and it'll walk us through the startup and show us some of the different instruments that we have to use so first thing we're going to do is preliminary cockpit preparation so fuel shut off valve click on there and you hit tick item fuel shut off valve closed okay so that's been done the next thing we're going to do is the fuel cutoff ring so you have to click until this turns white there it is there and tick item Fuel cutoff ring closed. And then the magneto lever and just tick item. Magneto lever 
aft. Now, if you want to speed this whole process up, you can just hit autocomplete page and it'll do them all. But let's just walk through these. Get this one lit up. Magneto breakers. Out. Mixture slash choke. In. Cow wings. All right, just go back to get cowlings lit up. Okay, so tick item. Cowlings off. So I'm just going to go outside and I'll show you what they're talking about here. So the cowling over the motor is off. That's because we're going to do an inspection of the motor, make sure everything looks okay. So I'm going to go back inside again, and I'm going to go visually check the engine. See now it takes us outside so we can look at it and make sure everything's okay. Now we're going to do the cowlings on again and tick item. So these little clips obviously have something to do with the cowlings. cowlings. On. Flight controls. I'll highlight that. Flight controls check you can force finish things if they if they if you get hung up so now we're going to start the engine fuel shut off valve. You see that spinning open so now it's open you just click on that to get it to open and close fuel cut off ring just tick item fuel cut off ring Open. So I push that in to open. Magneto lever. Four. Okay, let's do the breakers. Magneto breakers. In. Mixture and choke. Mixture slash choke. Out. Throttle, we're just going to open that a little bit. Throttle. Open. Okay. Propeller. Now I just check to make sure it's clear. There's nobody around it's going to get hit. And you just check item. Propeller area. Clear. Now I'm just going to go inside again here. And now to start it, you just click on the propeller. See how it's lighting up blue there? So that would be the next thing, but we're just going to skip this next one. Just going to hit it so you can see how you can start it on your own. So that's basically what we need to do to start it up. So I'm just going to go outside so we can see where we're at here on the runway. See where they want me to go back here. So what I'm going to do is turn and float onto the grass. Like I said, this is a tail dragger with no wheels. So. Let's just uh, give it a little gentle throttle. I'm going to try and cut the throttle back a bit and get behind the aircraft so you can see where we're going. So they want us to take off in that direction because of the wind. So I'm just going to go down the, uh, a ways and then turn around on this grass. So I'm not, even though, like I said, with Microsoft, they'll allow you to take off on the runway. Uh, let's try and be authentic as possible and just use grass takeoff. Uh, I've got little weeds here and everything, but still not too bad. All right, so I'm just going to slow down here now. Don't crank this thing too hard. Tip it over. I'm just going to go on the grass a little bit here. Okay, so I'm just going to take off right here. So grass and give it throttle. When I get my speed up. 
I'm going to just gently pull back. It'll take off at about anytime anywhere in the green zone, probably about 50 knots. Starting to swerve a bit, so that's when you can gently pull back. And up she comes. So don't climb too quickly or do anything too aggressive right now as it's building up some speed and don't get your angle of attack up too high. So you can see from the VFR map on the right what direction we have to go. We have to turn and follow the magenta line that's on the compass. Now, these instruments are in my heads-up display, turned on for external in my settings. So I have an external compass here. Now, what I've found with this aircraft is it works very well if you trim it. So those trim buttons I showed you on my joystick, see, I just hit them. You see the trim, go, uh, the vertical speed going up? I'm just going to hit, hit down again. But you can really control the aircraft nicely with the trim. And the yoke sort of gives you your uh, heading. So you can see we're climbing slowly. And just go inside for a second. You can see this is uh, the altitude ring is telling us our altitude. So if you get your eyes uh, off the plane, uh, it'll quickly start to wander. You know, if you're inside looking at your instruments and not paying attention. So this exterior view helps a lot. Now there's a view you can use. Uh, that's just on my joystick, the button. So this is called the close uh, cockpit view. And this is sort of a landing view. And pull back on it once again. I have the instrument view inside. And then if I do pull back one more time, I'm getting this view for landing. So, let's go outside and take a look at the aircraft. It's uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can see there's no tail information uh, because if you try and enter it, it doesn't show up for some reason. So this is what you get in the basic view. And let's take a look at that engine. This is going to wander on me a bit, but look how beautifully it's detailed. The little tappets are going, the heat coming off the exhaust. I can see where I'm going here on the map. Heading more or less in the right direction. Just going to back off a bit and get behind the aircraft for you so you can see. Okay, so we're doing pretty good here. And like I said, you see the vertical speed going up there and here? So I can just level off by pressing on my uh, trim button on my joystick. And it's going to bring it down again because I just want to stay around 1200. So I'm just tapping it gently, not giving it too much, one or two shots of trim. And we're headed in the right direction. So here's our speed. You don't want to get into the red, blow your wings off. So this, this is a good speed to be at. If you're in the yellow, it's not going to be giving you too much of an issue. Just a bit of a warning or caution. I'm just going to turn a bit to the right and down a little bit because we're getting our altitudes going up. The plane will gradually start to climb as it uh, sort of gets in the air and builds up some speed. Now it's descending, so I have to cut back on the throttle. Here's a nice view of the uh, landscape down below beautifully rendered. So anybody from this area, in the area of Richmond or Chesterfield, will probably recognize a lot of these uh, different buildings and highways and the river bridge here. So you can see you don't have to, I, I've got this throttle on about half and it's cruising along at 70. Now that might seem like painstakingly slow. But you have to remember, back in the day when this aircraft was used, this was considered extremely fast. Because cars were only averaging around uh, 25 miles an hour, had to follow the road. So this is like as the crow flies. So 
it was fascinating to the people back then that these pilots could fly these planes and they were just amazed when they came to town to do their barnstorming shows. And even today, if anyone lands or uh, has one of these planes and lands at an airport, uh, they gather a lot of attention because people still love this aircraft. So we're just gently cruising along here and I'm going to show you how to land this plane because it does not have a brake. We're going to have to land it gently and get it on total island, let it slow down and then pull back on the yoke, you know, uh, which is my joystick here, in order to get this thing to stop. But you don't want to do it until the plane has slowed down considerably or it will start to lift off again. So by pulling back, what you're going to do is create some drag on that uh, drag stick at the back. Tail dragger stick. So I'm going to give it some throttle now. It's slowing down quite a bit. So we're about halfway there. Once I get closer, I'll be able to pick out my runway. So here we are over here. So we're descending. We'll come back again. Give no throttle. You know, so we're using visual flight rules, which they would have done back then. So this road here is a good uh, thing to follow to lead you right into the airport. So we're going to try and land on the grass over here. Now we could turn and land that way as well. Let's just see uh, when we get there. Since we're not using air traffic control, we can basically get our own clearance to land wherever we want. I'm just watching my airspeed basically and my altitude to make sure I'm not going up or down too much. But I mean, this is where I sort of want to be, 1,200 feet. I'm just strain over here a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll land this way here. We might go across a little bit of the taxiway there, but that'll get us towards the airport instead of going out this way away from the terminal. We'll see how long it takes us, how far we have to go to get stopped here. Because like I said, there's no brake, so what you want to do is get your um, airspeed down. And this looks like probably the direction to land today because of the wind and everything. So I am at 900 feet, which is pretty good. I'm going to turn and uh, just manually push down on the yoke on the joystick to get the plane to descend. And I'm going to watch my airspeed. Now, if you feel like it's going to stall, just give it, give it some throttle. You have to push the throttle almost Pull just to get it up again here at speed. Yeah, that doesn't really look like um, a lot of grass there, so we might go across that a little bit later. But I'm, I'm going to try landing in this direction. 
Now I'll go inside, and like I said, we can get a landing view here by pushing on my center button. And if I pull it back, pull it back again, I can get a nice view out the side here. So I am going to cut back my speed. I'm going too fast. So try and get it down. So get your speed right back. You just want the, this thing to set down all by itself gently. Yeah, the grass is a little bit smoother here, not so wild. So just set it down gently. There we go. So now, now what we want to do is just let this thing come to a gentle stop. Like once it's slow enough, I'll be able to pull back to stop it. We're just going to cross this taxiway here. Okay, now if I pull back on the joystick, I probably could have done a little sooner, but it's going to make the tail drag. So you can see it's still running. So if you don't do that, this thing's going to go on forever. You just pull back, and it'll come to a stop. Okay, so we've arrived at the uh, destination. Let's go inside. If you're wondering how to shut this thing off, I'll show you. It's just a matter of, there's your, that we can do. And also, you can click on that. Um, once again, close that. And cut off. Close. So there we go. That completes the flight with this uh, very interesting and fascinating aircraft. So like I said, try and land on grass. Uh, let's see, if I had have come up a little further, probably would have still ended up going across this one. Now I did try landing over here, which worked a little better because it's a lots of grass and long, long stretch. I was able to stay on the grass. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and got some pointers. So. Catch you next time with another plane.